This war to overthrow the Syrian government has strengthened rather than weakened our enemies like ISIS. Working with countries like Saudi Arabia and Turkey, we are fueling a brutal civil war that's caused the deaths of over 400,000 Syrians and millions more refugees fleeing their homes. The fact is, if this war is successful and the Assad government is overthrown, the strongest force that exists in Syria that will take over in Syria is ISIS and Al-Qaeda. This will result in a far worse humanitarian disaster, refugee crisis, and a genocide against religious minorities, secularists, atheists, LGBT, and anyone who does not prescribe to this specific extreme ideology. What to speak of the fact that this will present an even greater security threat to the region and to the world. <clears throat> Just the other day, we heard news of 51 State Department diplomats calling on President Obama to bomb the Syrian government. Unfortunately, this is not surprising. These kinds of bombings and escalation are what will occur if Secretary Clinton does what she says she will do as president and establish a so-called no-fly zone in Syria, an action that would cost billions of dollars, tens if not hundreds of thousands of ground troops, as well as a massive U.S. air presence. This action will escalate this war to overthrow the Syrian government, causing more death, more destruction, more chaos, more refugees, all the while strengthening groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda. The very first action that must be taken when implementing a no-fly zone in Syria would be to bomb Russian and Syrian anti-aircraft defense systems. This would lead our country into a direct confrontation with the world's other nuclear power, Russia. Too many people have not learned from the past. They've learned nothing from Iraq and that overthrow of Saddam Hussein. They've learned nothing from overthrowing Gaddafi in Libya and the chaos that has ensued as a result, where, the, where ISIS has now been declared as having their strongest and most dangerous foothold. The only way to prevent this escalation, the only way to prevent this disaster from increasing is for the American people, us, to come out strongly now before another administration comes into power and say that this war to overthrow the Syrian government must end now. This can only happen if Congress and the administration hears your voices. Just on Thursday, a couple days ago, I offered an amendment on the House floor to the Department of Defense Appropriations Bill that would have begun this process of ending this interventionist war in Syria. 135 bipartisan members of Congress voted for this amendment. It failed, however, because too many of our Democratic members, many of whom consider themselves to be progressive, voted against it. Many who are well-intentioned, but who need to understand that this war, just like the one in Iraq, just like the one in Libya, will not help the Syrian people. It will simply compound the devastation, suffering, and chaos, making their lives worse than ever before. As Donna mentioned, I've introduced a bill, H.R. 4108, that would end any and all funding for this regime change war in Syria. And I urge each and every one of you to call your member of Congress to support this bill so that we can end this war now. This is an issue that we'll have to continue to fight on, but it's an issue that confronts us right now because we know there are people in this administration and the State Department who are trying to pressure and convince President Obama to escalate this war. We have to let him know that the solution is not an escalation of this war, but rather what's needed is an end to this regime change war in Syria. And so now I'm asking you to stand up and do the same. 
stand with me and demand an end to this war to overthrow the government of Assad. Demand an end to all interventionist regime change wars. We need to let leaders in Washington know that we will not stand idly by and allow this nation to escalate an already deadly, devastating war. We need to let leaders in Washington know that we do not support overthrowing any dictator we want, acting as the world's police, acting as if it's America's responsibility to use our military to attempt to remake the world in the image that we choose. We need to let leaders in Washington know that we must stop wasting our valuable, precious, limited resources on these regime change wars and instead focus those resources on investing and rebuilding and strengthening our communities right here at home. We can't afford to do both. The power that's in this room by each of you gathered from all parts of our country, representing the conversations and debates and engagement that's occurring in each of our communities on important issues like this, engaging in our democratic process, many people for the first time feeling empowered, recognizing that the true power in our country lies in your hands, in our hands, in the hands of the people. And it is through our work and our voices and our action that we can truly affect this kind of change that our country so desperately needs. Thank you very much for all that you're doing. We've got to work together to continue this path going forward. Aloha, thank you.